Hurricane Carlotta is now just hours away from making landfall along the Mexican coastline, and there are still signs of golf development potential in roughly one week. Good afternoon. This is a 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app tropical weather update on Friday, June 15th. As of the 2 p.m. Pacific Time Advisory from the National Hurricane Center, the center of circulation is located at 14.8 degrees north and 96.3 degrees west. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 105 miles per hour, making this a Category 2 hurricane, and it does have the chance to strengthen further into a Category 3 major hurricane shortly before landfall. It is currently moving toward the northwest at 12 miles per hour, and hurricane force winds are likely to reach the coast within the next 12 to 24 hours, even if the eye of the storm manages to stay offshore just a little bit longer during this period, it still looks as though the winds extending north of the center will still be able to make it inland. Also, this is not a favorable track for interest in the region over the next several days. As you can see, the storm is going to remain partly over water, and this is going to allow the storm to maintain itself slightly better than otherwise, and this is going to allow for over 20 inches of rainfall to take place, and especially some of those higher mountains where you get the orographic lifting effect, and this is just a perfect recipe for deadly mudslides. The following graphic shows the probability of encountering hurricane force winds, and as you can see, they do not extend too far away from the shoreline, but as noted just a moment ago, the threat of more significant heavy rainfall will go well beyond the hurricane force wind radius, and that could easily become the most deadly factor. Carlotta has rapidly intensified, especially since this morning, and we can see a well-defined eye now taking shape on the visible satellite animation. And the storm also appears to still be moving more toward the north-northwest, and there is a chance that the storm could track ever so gradually east of the official forecast, thus taking it inland a few hours quicker than anticipated, and once again just a little bit toward the east of where the current projection has it. The latest infrared animation is equally as impressive, and there are still signs of strengthening on this graphic. As you can see at the start of the animation, the eye was a little bit more ragged. Toward the end, there is less cloud cover within the eye, and less cloud cover within the eye of the storm means that this storm is still strengthening. This is a more regional view of the infrared satellite. As you can see, the central dense overcast is already beginning to move its way inland, so tropical storm conditions are already impacting much of Mexico here along the southern coast, and the hurricane force winds will come fairly soon. The latest radar site out of southern Mexico has also captured Hurricane Carlotta very nicely. You can see that the eye is now just miles away from the coast, and the most deadly part of the storm, the eye wall, which is where your strongest winds are located, is even closer. And you can see it's moving fairly close here. It's already near Puerto Angel, and interest from Puerto Angel just to the west as well need to be bracing for at least the possibility of sustained major hurricane force winds along with the threat of a very deadly storm surge especially near and just to the east of the eye because that is where your strongest southerly flow is going to be moving in so you need to be seeking shelter immediately before conditions rapidly deteriorate. So why is Carlotta forecast to stall out essentially over the next 72 to 96 hours? Well, we need to look upstairs to determine what the steering factors are first and foremost. And you can't really see it too well on this graphic, but there is a mid to upper level steering ridge centered to the north of the storm. It is situated mainly over central and northern Mexico. And as you can see, the primary jet stream and all of the major troughs and weaknesses are located across the northern United States. However, this pattern is going to gradually change over the next two to four days. As you can see, there's more energy streaming into the Pacific Northwest and the ridge that was once centered over northern Mexico is now shifting westward into the Baja Peninsula by 72 hours and as we go into days 4 and 5 you can see that there is a weakness and it is right along 100 degrees west including Mexico and Texas and this is going to allow for some of the remnant moisture to begin to funnel more so into the western Gulf of Mexico and by this time, we also have a secondary ridge centered over the U.S. eastern seaboard. Now, what effect will that have on the pattern? Well, this is also going to set the stage for added low-level convergence across Central America, extending into the Bay of Campeche and Western Gulf. Now, what I'm about to show you is the GFS forecast over the next seven days of the 850 millibar theta E. And all this really is is a combination of the greatest moisture and heat content in the lowest layers of the atmosphere. 
And where you have the most theta E, well, those are typically your most favorable hotspots for tropical cyclone activity. Sure enough, near Hurricane Carlotta, we see a theta E max fairly close to the center of circulation. And overall, the entire eastern Pacific is loaded with high theta E content. If we fast forward over the next six to seven days, you'll notice that the transition more so into the Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean will commence and we're also seeing some waves moving through the Southern Caribbean and inching their way into the Western Gulf of Mexico. So we have added moisture coming in from two different areas, one being the Caribbean and the other being the remnants of Carlotta. Furthermore, the 850 millibar forecast animation shows everything very nicely. You see that Carlotta dissipates over land but some of the remnant activity begins to surge north into the western Gulf of Mexico and as the loop starts over you'll also notice that we have some added convergence and moisture from some type of impulse coming out of the Caribbean and also it moves westward into the western Gulf. Meanwhile the CMC model is also showing a similar pattern with Carlotta weakening but then some of its remnant moisture begins to move into the western Gulf of Mexico and much like what we saw with the GFS there's another pulse of energy moving across the Caribbean and by day six it's located out across the central Gulf of Mexico. But that is not all. This is the current GFS initialized shear pattern. We see the upper level ridge that is supporting Hurricane Carlotta and toward its north we have a lot of wind shear across the central Gulf of Mexico and this is one of the reasons why we're not worried about any short-term development but if we fast forward to day six that favorable upper level ridge has expanded and also shifted well into the western gulf and this would be a favorable setup if this model pattern were to verify. So what just is that pulse of energy that we see in the model streaking across the Caribbean over the next five to seven days? Well there's really nothing much to show you on the satellite imagery but sometimes the satellite can be deceiving for example, there's a lot of tropical waves that traverse the Atlantic all the time that are hardly detectable because they lack any significant cloud cover and we do see something similar to that today. And first off, this is the surface chart from the National Hurricane Center and they are depicting a tropical wave passing through the Lesser Antilles. And sure enough, the visible satellite imagery doesn't show anything too well defined crossing into the Caribbean, but it looks as though we do have a tropical wave that is encountering a lot of vertical wind shear. So the convection associated with it looks elongated from west to east, and that is because as the cloud tops shoot up into the atmosphere, they're being blown to the east by those strong westerly winds. But this makes sense with what we're seeing in the models. The timetable does add up with what we're seeing. By day six, this is when the tropical wave would be moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Also, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is more of a global atmospheric weather pattern, is something that can promote tropical development in one basin for one to two weeks at a time, and then somewhat allow for those chances to be undercut thereafter. And as of right now, the favorable pulse for tropical cyclone activity is moving through the eastern Pacific. That adds up with us having Hurricane Carlotta out there. And if that weren't enough, there's a second more intense pulse out over the western Pacific. And sure enough, we have a fairly strong typhoon that is developing to the east of the Philippines. And this second wave of activity is also forecast to move into the eastern Pacific and Gulf of Mexico. So that disturbance moving into the Gulf of Mexico may be moving in during the right time of this MJO phase. And this could help to promote some development even further. Last but not least, this is the sea level pressure and low-level vorticity forecast at day 8 from the reliable ECMWF model and it is showing a disturbed area of weather extending from the central gulf southwestward into the Bay of Campeche and western gulf but this is only showing the pressure lowering down to 1008 millibars so we are far from a done deal in terms of getting a bona fide tropical cyclone out of this we are simply saying that the Gulf of Mexico will be an area to watch going into next week and into the weekend thereafter. So that is all for now. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com for rapid updates of Hurricane Carlotta and other breaking weather news information along with the Hurricane Tracker app for more detailed video updates like the one that you've just viewed.